Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafil mursalin Sayyidina Muhammadin Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam Wa ala alihi wa ushabi ajma'in Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh In Surah Al-Imran Allah speaks about the muntaqeen those who have true consciousness of him <coughs> the people who truly believe in him the people who do good by him may Allah make us of them <laughs> and what does he say? بَعَدْعَوْهُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْفَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ and rush to the forgiveness of your love وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ and rush to a garden whose worth is greater than the heavens and the earth وَعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ it has been prepared for those who are conscious of Allah SubhanAllah and when Allah describes his muttaqeen what does he say? let me carry on the ayah الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالْدَّوْرَاءِ They are those who spend when the times are good and when the times are bad. So when the times are good, they are spending in general causes. And when the times are bad, they are still spending whatever the little they have in charitable causes. وَالْكَارِمِينَ الْغَيْزِ and they are people who swallow the anger and that's what I'm going to talk to you about anger, anger management you know we hear this there are people who do not let their anger get the best of them there are those who forgive others because we want to obtain the forgiveness of Allah isn't that so? and we have to be willing to forgive others. Wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen And Allah loves those who do good. Those who practice excellence in other words, ihsan. May Allah grant us that we become of the muhsineen. Muslimin, mu'mineen, muttaqeen, and muhsineen. Ya Hanis, that we can we can have. So in these verses, Allah talks about the muttaqeen, those who are truly conscious of Him. He says that if they swallow the anger, as if the anger is something physical and it's coming up, you know, it wells up, it rushes up, isn't it so? Because those killing me are so very old, no? Of course, eh? we are humans, ya Allah. And they want to wish, and they, they wish to show their power. They wish to show their anger, those that are below them. And, but instead of showing their wrath and their anger, they swallow that anger. The word which Allah uses is al <coughs> Those who swallow it, right? A man came to the Nabi Muhammad, <laughs> sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ya Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, give me advice that no one else can give me that only you can give me so what did Rasulullah say alayhi salam he said la taqdom do not become angry and the man says what other advice can you give me he says la taqdom do not get angry and the man again said what other advice do you have for me la taqdom do not become angry three times. Eh? The Prophet advised him not to become angry. What did the Prophet mean to not become angry? Because anger is an emotion all of us feel. Isn't it so? Do not let anger get the best of you. Do not let it overtake you. Don't let it be that you get angry and you do things and you say things that you will regret later. Don't let it make you lose control of your own body and your own time and your own mind. 
How many times have we not seen that relationships between husband and wife and family members and good friends and community members have been destroyed because of the ego over the arrogance over not being able to control the anger? You see that? Right? How many of us can say we got angry and we said a few words and later on we regretted those words? We regretted ever saying those words. Because once those words leave our mouth, very difficult to take it back. Right? Because as soon as you've spoken to them, they are gone. You no longer have control. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, La dat dog. Do not become angry. The anger the Prophet ﷺ talks about when he says, La dat dog. That anger is the anger that we express and we see on a daily basis. You know, today we get angry over the smallest of things. Yeah? The person in front, in front of me is driving, he's too slow, he's only driving 60. You know? The speed limit is 70 and he's going 60. He is going too slow and there is no quack. I'm angry now. Actually, I don't have that problem. Because I drive 140. There's no cars in front of me. So, no anger. No problem. Of course, there are a lot of ticket fees. <laughs> or, I haven't eaten my third meal. Eh? And it's already 30 minutes late. Bad you flow. And when you get it, there's too much salt in there. And this complaints and that complaints. We call this attitude first world problems. Really? It's first world problems, isn't it? These are the issues that we see in the first world. Go to the third world. They don't have that problem because they don't even have their first meal. They don't have their third meal. Oh, no. right? Isn't that? So they don't have that anger problems about them. Because may Allah relieve their issues. Ya Allah. Relieve their problems. Ya Allah. Right? So Allah has given us the luxury and so much blessings and ni'mah that we have the ability to get angry over such petty things and small things. Someone said, great minds discuss ideas, average minds discuss events, and small minds discuss people. Isn't it so? Some small minds are always obsessed over people. Who has said what? Who has done that? Right? Who married who? Whose relationship didn't work out? Who's been in the news? All of this the small people discuss these kind of things. Every mind, they discuss, I bought this new car, I bought this new house, this new iPhone, this iPad, you know? This is not the average mind. But the intelligent mind, they discuss ideas. What are we doing to our fellow human beings? to relieve their suffering, to uplift them. May Allah grant us of that type of people, Ya Allah. Right? So usually the bad kind of anger is over people or over things. Someone said, how dare you say that to me? Next time, I'm going to show you. So what happens? That anger wells up in the person. And if you know that, that the life of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what kind of person was he? Everyone has their anger and their thresh threshold. Someone says something insulting to you, but you don't get angry. You say it to your friend, now your friend is the angriest person and you could let everyone know. Right? Everyone has their own threshold for anger. What was the threshold? of anger of our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when did he get angry? did he get angry over little things? generally people who get angry over small things no one likes to be around him why? with that kind of anger and stress is contagious unstitled you know if you get stressed out with people around you get stressed out subhanallah who would want to be around a leader like that in any way who is always angry who's always stressed out, who would want to be around some kind of person? But Allah Jalla Jalalahu 
praises our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the Quran about that character. He says, "Walau kunta fadlan ghalidan al-qalb, la fadlu min hawli." And if you had been rude and harsh-hearted in speech, they would have run away from among you. Isn't that so? Subhanallah. They would never want to be around you, in other words. But what do we find? We find that people are so attached to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to his character, to his words, to his actions, to his leadership, to his judgment, that they always wanted to be around him. Listen, these were the companions. Yeah? So much so that Prophet is saying, them, spend some time with your family. Go spend time. Uh, go spend time in your business. Spend time with your friends. Go do a little bit other things. Don't need to hang around you all the time. It's subhanallah. I think we know that feeling. <laughs> but that is the kind of person Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam this is how people were attracted to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa They knew that he was not the kind of person to get obsessed and angry over a small thing. That is what drew all these people to him. Hundreds of thousands of people in a very short space of time in the middle of the desert. This is how all the people came to him. So we have to ask ourselves, what kind of person do we want to be? And there are excellent, amazing stories in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa which shows us how he dealt with scenarios and how he dealt with anger. A normal person in that situation would be so angry and would use his power and control around him. But Nabi alayhi salam never did that, subhanAllah. There was a Jewish person in Medina at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this man read in his own book, the Torah, yeah? about the final messenger was to come. And he read about the signs of the final messenger. And he wanted to see whether these signs were apparent in Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this man went to Nabi alayhi salam one day while the Prophet was in the gathering with his companions. And he says, Oh Muhammad, I would like to sell these goods. Do you want to purchase these goods? And Nabi Alayhi Salaam said, Yes, I will buy from you. How much do you want it? For payment? And how do you want payment? And the man said, You can pay me in a few days, you can pay me even in a week. Right? So this was the agreement, and there were witnesses around. But instead, the man comes a few days later. Right? And again, the Prophet Alayhi Salaam was in with his companions. Now remember, the Prophet is the governor of Medina at the time. Right? He is the most powerful man in Medina. Everyone looks up at him. He is the judge, he is the qadi, he is the governor, he is the mayor. It's everything, subhanAllah. Right? And this man walks up to Nabi Salaam and grabs him by the shirt. Rough and tumble. And he says, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, give me my right. So this man has done many things wrong. He broke the agreement himself by coming before the time. And he's been rough and tumble with our Nabi and his salatu was salat. Eh? Second of all, he's interrupting a gathering with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Thirdly, he's becoming aggressive. Eh? And he's grabbing Nabi alayhi salam by the garment. Now, who's standing around the Prophet alayhi salatu was salat? The companions. And, and they have their swords and their weapons with him. And you and I know Sayyidina Umar, radiallahu anhu, except for you. <laughs> and so when he said, Ya Rasulullah, says Sayyidina Umar, just give me the word, I will remove his head. The man probably got Jula, you know, <laughs> diarrhea. <laughs> you know, can you imagine if a person speaks to you like that? So what did the Prophet say? And did he become angry? He said, Umar, pay this man and give him his hat, his right, and give him something extra because you scared him. <laughs> and th this is Rasulullah. <laughs> Remember, he was reading in the Torah the signs of the Prophet that was supposed to come. 
and he saw that from the Bible, salatu was salam. And in front of all, he said, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah. Does you accept Islam in front of all? Why? Because of the mannerism how Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam portrayed himself. Subhanallah. This was the character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was calm and collect your faith. He's not let, letting anyone dictate to him how to live his life. Eh? Subhanallah. He's not letting this person tell him what kind of ruler he must be or what kind of leader he has to be. No. That is what we see when he was asked in the gathering of the companions of Rasulullah. He said, who is the, sh who is the Shadid? Eh? Those days the Shadid was somebody like a wrestler who could wrestle and throw throw the person down on the ground, right? So when the Prophet asked him, who is Shadi? What was the what reply? He said, the one who, so the, the Prophet asked that question, so the Sahaba said, the one who can overthrow the other one, the strong one. And the Prophet said, Laysa shadidu bi surah. The Shadi is not someone who can throw everyone else down and who can wrestle everyone else down. إِنَّمَا الشَّدِيدُ الَّذِي يَمْلِكُ نَفْسَهُ عِنْدَ الْغَضَبِ The Shadid is the one who can control himself when he is angry. SubhanAllah. <laughs> so the question we have to ask ourselves, are we in control? Or is our anger in control of us? Sometimes anger is actually justified. Not over people, not over things, but over ideas, over principles and values. Yes, someone is attacking your family, you have to defend yourself, you have to defend your family, you have to, somebody is attacking our deen, our religion, we have to defend it. Right? The Muslim is humble, he is not arrogant, but the Muslim is also not humiliated. You know, let me just say, if you hit me on the one cheek, I give you the other cheek. Uh -uh, we don't give the other cheek, give you the first. <laughs> you defend yourself. So the Muslim doesn't withstand humiliation. But you don't get humiliated over small things. Someone insulted Nabi alayhi salam by grabbing his shirt. He didn't really act violently. No, look what he did. Subhanallah. The Prophet never got angry over himself, over what someone did to him. A man came to Nabi alayhi salatu and held the sword to his neck. And the man said, who will protect you now from me? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Allah will protect me. And the sword fell from, the, from his hand and the Prophet alayhi grabbed it. And he said, who will protect you now from me? <laughs> Subhanallah. Of course, he let the man go. He never got upset. Let him go. As someone said, when it is justified, when anger is justified, then it is only justified at the right time, at the right place, for the right reasons and with the right intensity. And to give you an example, you know, many years ago it was a movie insulting our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We wouldn't go watch that for him. <coughs> but the problem is the Muslims gave it the greatest marketing campaign ever by, by, by overreacting. We have to have wisdom. So suddenly a billion people watched it. Only a couple of hundred were watching it. But because the way we were, we were overreacting, we should have been cool and calm about it. SubhanAllah. <coughs> Yes, we defend our principles, we defend our Iman, but not in a way that is unwise. Right? So when we do get angry, the only reason we should get angry is for principle, for defending our Iman, or our faith, our religion, with the right intensity and in a wise way. So I ask Allah Jalla Jalalu that He helps us to control our anger. Amen. To help us to swallow our anger, as I stated from the start, we'll call the mean. Eh? To help us to react in the best of ways, 
that he does not make us reactive people. The Prophet ﷺ said, when one of you becomes angry, while standing, he should sit down. And if it doesn't leave him yet, then lie down. In another hadith, the Prophet said, that if you're angry, don't make wudu. Because anger is from shaitan, shaitan is from fire. So when you make wudu, it cools you. Okay? I think some of us will have to jump into the sea. <laughs> ya Allah. Subhanallah. Look at this classic example of Sayyidina Ali bin Abi Talib. He was one day, he was once in, in the jihad fighting. And when the leader of the Muslim army attacked during the confrontation, Ali radiallahu anhu managed to overcome him. And he was about to kill him. And the man spat in his face. I see for you. As iemand moet spugen, Let this be human uh, from us. For what would you and I do? All things will go in our mind. Eh? What did say Ali do? He immediately stepped back. He had the job to kill him. Oh, he was putting in my face. I was cut his tongue in three pieces. <laughs> no, he stepped back. And the man said, you could have killed me, why did you stop? And Sayyidina Ali said, I have no personal animosity towards you. I was fighting, fighting you because of your disbelief and in rebellion against Allah. If I had killed you after you spat in my face, it would, have been, it would have been because of my personal anger and desire for revenge, which I do not wish to take. This was the the method of the Prophet and the Sahaba Ikram. When two people are angry, you know, I always say this at, at, at weddings. When two people are angry at each other, have you seen sometimes when a husband and wife scream at each other? And they shout. But the thing is doof. <laughs> Don't they say that? You know why? Because their hearts are far apart. Their hearts are far apart. So to cover that distance, they have to shout and shout and go to Kira. SubhanAllah. But have you seen a couple in love? Oh, sweet whisperings. <laughs> I love you, my sweet. Make him say, Piyar Karti. You're always nice. There comes a time, I just said this in wedding school. There comes a time when you reach our age, we don't even talk anymore. We, speak. <laughs> we just look. Okay. If I give that book to my wife, she knows. She might make me coffee. <laughs> we speak, be the kind of person who attracts others and who is able to guide and lead others like Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. It's a classic example between father and son. How angry was the father against Mabi Ibrahim? He wanted to stone him. I, I just recite a few verses here. Where Allah says, Inna Ibrahim ala awahun halim. Verily Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam used to invoke Allah with humility, glorify him, and remember him much. And he was forbearing. Yeah? Subhanallah. Al Allah, according to the tafsir of Al Qutubi, has 15 different meanings. Uh, we've been taught Allah is the plural of Ah. And Ah is the alif of Allah and the Ha of Allah brought together. Ah. 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 So those people who are in dhikr know what we are talking about. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam was always in a state of Allah, always in a state of Ah, remembering Allah. May Allah grant us that, ya Allah. And he was patient with his father. <coughs> Ibrahim alayhi salam was wise beyond his years. Yet his father did not listen to him because of extreme ignorance or arrogance. And his father threatened to stone him. But we noticed in the continuing ayahs that our Ibrahim salam, did not lose his temper, but instead responded to his father's threatening attitude with respect 
and with wisdom. So, oh children, just because you got your big degrees and your father only passed matric or standard two, don't think your knowledge has surpassed your mom and your dad. You are what you are because of them. And don't you come and tell him, hey, what you are doing is shirk and it's haram and this is this and that is that. Cool down. Calm down because I'm getting these cases as well. I've even got cases where a child is smacking the parent stuff with Allah. Ya Allah. Ya Allah. Can you imagine the smack you're going to get in there? You're all here. Allah protect our children, our grandchildren, Ya Allah. Be careful about arrogance because it comes through even through your, your, your realm, like it happened to Shaitan. Isn't it so? So be careful. So look what Ibrahim says, alayhi salam. Ya abadi, la ta'abudu shaytan, inna shaytan akan lir rahmati asiyya. Oh father, do not worship shaytan, for shaytan is a rebel against the merciful Allah. Ya abadi, inni akhafu ayya masaka adabun min al-rahman, fatakuna li shaytani waliyya. Father, I fear that punishment of the merciful will fall upon you and you will become a guide for shaytan. قال بدي ريبلاي فادر ريبلاي أراقب أنت عن آلهة يا إبراهيم إيش إن دو يو شرينك أوين فروم ماي غاز إبراهيم لا إن لم تنتهي لا أرجو منك وأجرني مليا شوري إف يو دونت ستوب أي واس كوم يو سو ليف مي فور أوين ودي إبراهيم سيد عليه السلام قال سلام عليك استغفر لك ربي إنه كان بي حفيا. Peace be upon you, Ibrahim. He said, I shall call upon my Lord. He said, No, peace be upon you and on his father. Ibrahim alayhi salam said, I shall call upon my Lord to forgive you, for to me he has been so gracious. وأعتزلكم وما تدعون من دون الله وأدعو ربي عسى ألا أكون بدعاء ربي شقيا. I shall stay away from you and what you worship instead of Allah. Said Ibrahim alayhi salam to him. I worship my Lord and hope that my prayers will not be ignored. Subhanallah. This is a relationship of Ibrahim alayhi salam and I give you example of our Nabi Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم that. If you have anger management problem, we always hear from psychiatrists and psychologists given to us. Look at the examples of the anger management techniques, techniques which our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave, which Nabi Ibrahim alaihi salatu wasallam gave, which the Sahabi Kiram Sayyidina Ali gave, and there are so many examples. Please, may Allah assist us in controlling our anger. Shukran alhamdulillah.